Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yassirli amri. In the name of Allah, my Lord, open up for me my chest and, in, and ease my task for me. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Now, today's topic is actually one of the most important. It, it's, it's a crucial topic to understanding how the Quran was revealed and what, what inspiration was given to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam. Now, the traditional Muslims have this view that what was given to Prophet Muhammad was actually two revelations. Now, they use terms such as, they would say, uh, he was given something called Wahi Zahir, which is the manifest revelation, or they refer to it as the uh, Wahi uh, Matlu, which is the recited revelation, which they refer to the Quran. And they say he was also given something called Wahi Batin, which is Batin, which is the sort of uh, hidden revelation, which sounds quite strange. And they also refer to it as uh, Wahi Ghayri Matlu, which is the unrecited revelation. Now, however, this sounds nice and fancy, but the question is, is this really what the Quran says, brothers? Is it really what the Quran says? Does the Quran really talk about these two Wahis or some secondary Wahi that was given to Prophet Muhammad? Now, Let's see what the Quran actually says about it. So I'm going to quote you numerous verses here, okay? Now, the first verse I'm going to quote is chapter 15, verse 9. It's a well-known verse. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. Okay, now the word here is nazzalna. I'm going to actually talk about this quite extensively in, in a moment. The word nazzalna comes from the root uh, nun zaylam. I'm going to talk, to talk about that shortly, which means to send down or to descend or, or to bring down. Allah said, verily, it is us who sent down the Quran, the dhikr, the dhikr, and surely we will guard it. Now here, the word lahu in Arabic, if you look, look this up, it's, it, it's third person masculine singular pronoun. So Allah has referred to a single source, singular. It is we who sent down the dhikr and upon us is its preservation. We will guard it. Guard it. See, singular pronoun. It doesn't talk about dual, nor does it describe it as, as plural. Singular. That's important. Okay, we'll continue. Now, this verse is absolutely critical to understanding wahi. The, the nature of wahi, or what actually wahi is, according to the Quran. Now, ch chapter 42, verse 51. This is very important. It reads, and it is not for any human being, li bashari, a bashar is a person, human being, that Allah should speak to him, except by revelation. Now the words here in Arabic are, yukallimahu Allahu illa wahyan. The word yukallima, which means to, to, to speak or to give words, right? Allah does not speak to a bashar except, illa, except wahyan, through inspiration. Now this word wahyan here, Come from the root wow ha ya. I'm going to talk about that shortly as well, which means to inspire or to reveal. Okay, or or that there's a second way Allah speaks to a human being, or al uh, min warai hijabin, or from behind a hijab or barrier, a partition, or al yursila rasulan fa yuhiya bi idnihi ma yasha, or he sends a messenger. To reveal by his permission what he wills. Indeed, he is the most high and wise. So from this verse, we, we've learned we've learned a very, very valuable lesson. Allah Azawajal tells us that he only speaks, now you kalima, speaking, giving words to a human being except through three ways. Through a wahyan or through a, a hijab or a barrier, a partition, or he sends a messenger to reveal by his permission. Now here's a question. How did Allah Azawajal, you kalima, speak to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam? Now, if you go to the next verse straight after this, it tells you, look what it reads. At verse 52, it reads the following. And thus we have revealed or inspired to you. The word here, awhayna ilayka, to you. See, awhayna shares the same root as the word wahyan. Wawhaya, wawhaya, awhayna, inspired to you. An inspiration of our command, Ruhan min Amrina. Now the verse continues. You did not know what is the book, Al Kitab, 
all what is faith, al iman. Now, this is addressing Prophet Muhammad. You did not know what is a book or what is iman, but we have made it singular pronoun. We have made it a light by which we guide. Now, look at look what it says here. It's very interesting in the Arabic. Nuran, a light. Nehti. Nehti is we guide. Bihi. The word bihi is there. Bihi in Arabic, third person masculine singular pronoun. So Allah Azza is referring to a single thing that will inspire the Prophet Muhammad. And by it, bihi, a light by which we guide. It, singular pronoun. Who we will of our service. And indeed, you go to a straight path. Now, I know many Muslims, uh, subhanAllah, they like to quote this, this last part of a verse. It's actually a part of a verse. It's not the full verse. Right? They say, and here in Arabic read, Wa innaka la tahdi ila It says, You, Muhammad, alayhi go to a straight path. But is it Prophet Muhammad, alayhi on his own accord? Is he like an independent guide? Does he guide independently? No, of course not. He guides by the light. See? A light by which we guide whom we will of our servants. So it's by the light that was given to Prophet Muhammad which people were guided. Does that make sense? To me, it makes perfect sense. It's by the light. Bihi. Nehdi bihi. Singular pronoun. Right? Now, the word wahyan. Wahyan al hayna shares the same root. It comes from the Arabic root wal ha And it typically means the following. To indicate, reveal, suggest, point out, put a thing into the mind, Dispatch a messenger, inspire, speak secretly, hasten, make sign, sign swiftly, suggest with speed, write, say something in a whisper tone so that only the hearer hears it, clearly but not the person standing close to him. The word wahyun also shares the same root, which means revelation, swift sign, uh, inspiration, written thing, divine inspiration. So I render the, the uh, Arabic root wahya, wahyun, as inspiration or revelation to inspire or to reveal that's how I render that word and it makes perfect sense so so far we could see from this verse the three ways in which Allah speaks you kalima to, to, to his servants and to Muhammad he did it through wahya because here it says we have revealed or inspired awhayna ilayka to you the Quran from this verse it's, this is clearly describing the Quran clearly let's go to the next verse inshallah this is interesting. Chapter 2, verse 23. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down, sent down upon our servant, Nazalna comes from the root Nun Zaylam. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Allah Abdina, upon our servant. Then produce a surah like thereof. Think about this. Bi suratin, surah, min mithdihi. Now the word mithdihi means likeness or equivalent, something similar, right? Bring a surah like it if you're in doubt about what we send down to our servant. Now, here's a question. Now, if Allah Azawajal sent down something other than surahs, other than the Quran, why would Allah say bring a surah like it? Why couldn't Allah just say, you know, bring a wahi like it? But it doesn't say that. It says bring a surah like it. So this just goes to show the only thing that came down to Prophet Muhammad was surahs. Now, can you refer to the hadith literature or the sunnah as surahs? Think about that, brothers. Bring a surah like it if you are doubtful. Think about that. Now, the word nazalna, I'm going to talk about this quite a fair bit, comes from the root nun zay lam in Arabic. It means to descend, come down, go down, happen, alight at, settle in a place, lodge. The word anzala shares the same root. To send down, give. The word nazala, nazala. To cause the descend, send down the word tanzil, sending down divine revelation, orderly arrangement, and authentic compilation, gradual revelation. I render that root nun zaylan as sub to descend, to come down, to come down, to descend. Okay? Sent down, sending down. Alright, let's continue, inshallah. Yeah, chapter 2, verse 97. Say, the messenger is told to say, Qul, say to the people, Whoever is an enemy to Jibril, Jibril alayhi salam, it is none but he who has brought down the Qur'an upon your heart. 
Notice the word Quran is not there in the text, in the Arabic. But look what it says in the Arabic. It's really interesting. For innahu, verily he, referring to Jibril alayhi salam, nazzalahu. Now the word nazzala on its own means to send down. But the fact that it's got the suffix, hu at the end of it, nazzalahu, sent it, singular pronoun, ala qalbika, upon your heart. By the permission of Allah, confirming that which be before it and is a God as a good title for the believers. Now let's go back. Let's go back for a second. Remember this verse? How Allah subhanahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you kalima speaks to a basha through three ways. Remember, we've shown that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, spoke to Muhammad through wahya. But I've just shown you now the other verse just, which we just read talks about Jibreel how he brought down brought down the Quran upon the heart by the permission of Allah. Say this. Or that he sends a messenger. Now, Jibreel is also referred to as a messenger of Allah. He sent Jibreel to Muhammad to reveal by his permission what he wills. So, straight off the bat, we can see here that Allah spoke to Prophet Muhammad through two ways. Through Wahyan and he sent a messenger down to him to also reveal the Quran. Now, I'm going to show you numerous other verses. SubhanAllah, there's so many verses that prove this. Now, let's continue. Okay, remember that word, Nazzalahu, third person masculine singular pronoun. He brought it down, singular pronoun, upon your heart. Now, you see, I'll show you so many verses. Allah SWT always refers to the revelation as singular. It's never dual, it's never plural. And I'm going to prove this to you. Okay, here's another verse, chapter 2, verse 231. Now, this is a heavily abused verse by the Muslims. But if you pay attention to the Arabic words, it's subhanAllah, it's amazing. Look what it says here. Now, the verse starts off and, it's, and it talks about divorce, when you divorce women. Okay? Because, because of time, I, I didn't put the whole verse there, but it's to do with divorcing women, right? And then at the end of the verse it says, And remember the favor of Allah upon you and what has been revealed to you of the book, Al-Kitab, and wisdom, wal hikmati. Now, Muslims, especially the traditionalists, they have this idea that the Kitab is the Quran and the Hikmah is something else. But is that really what the Quran is saying? Now, if you continue reading in the Arabic, this is really interesting. It says, by which he instructs you. Now, the, look, pay attention. The word, ya idhukum. Ya idhukum means he instructs, Allah instructs. Bihi. The word bihi in Arabic is singular pronoun. By it, he instructs you. Think about that. Now, in Arabic, there's the word bihima. There's bihi and there's the word bihima. Bihima is double. Double, jewel. And there's also the word bihimo in Arabic, which is plural. But it doesn't say that here, does it? It says bihi, singular pronoun. By it, he instructs you. So the book and the wisdom are, in fact, attributes of the Quran. Because there's so many, there's numerous verses in the Quran which describe the Quran describes itself as a book in so many verses. The Quran, the Quran also describes itself as hikmah in so many verses. So the book and the wisdom are in fact one and the same thing. It's the Quran itself. Ya idhikum bihi, singular pronoun. By it he instructs you. Isn't that interesting? Well, let's continue, inshallah. Bihi, third person, master, singular pronoun. Now I forgot to put the translation there. Revealed, I think it was Anzala, revealed, Anzala, to you of the book and wisdom. Ya idhukum bihi, singular pronoun. Subhanallah. Look at this verse here, chapter 4, verse 166. I love this, look at this. But Allah bears witness to that which he has revealed to you. Anzala, nun zaylam, to send down, to descend. Ilaika, to you. Look at this. He has sent it, singular pronoun. He has sent it down. Anzalahu. So the hu, if you take away the hu there, anzala simply means sent down. But the hu suffix at the end makes it singular pronoun. Sent it down with his knowledge. And the angels bear witness also. Allah bears witness and the angels bear witness. But Allah said it, singular pronoun. Sent it down. And sufficient is Allah as a witness. So here, anzalahu, third person singular pronoun. 
Now, you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about a dual revelation or in a plural form. It's always singular, brothers. Think about that. Here's another verse. <clears throat> Chapter 6, verse 19. Say, what thing the messengers told to say to the people? What thing is the greatest testimony? Say, Allah is a witness between me and you. And this Quran was revealed or inspired to me. Wa uhiya ilayya hadha al-Quran. The Quran. If you keep reading in Arabic, li'unzirukum bihi wa man balagha. Li'unzirukum bihi. Bihi again is single pronoun. The Quran was inspired to me. Uhiya. The word uhiya comes from the root. Wauhaya. Wahyan. Comes from that root. Inspired to me. Ilayya hadha al-Quran. Is there any mention of any, any other wahi here, brothers? Think about it. Let's go to the next verse. Now, I love this. Chapter 12, one, verses 1 to 3. It's actually, I should have put 1 there. It's 1 to 3. Now, this verse here encompasses the, the two ways in which Allah speaks to Muhammad. Remember, He speaks to him through uh, wahyan, inspires him, and also sends down the revelation, right? This is, uh, uh, this is covered in... Uh, in, in this verse here, look what it says. Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of a clear book. Tilka ayatul kitabin mubin. Indeed, we have sent it down, it, singular pronoun, as an Arabic Quran. Anzalnahu, singular pronoun, Quranan Arabian. See, Allah sent down through Jibir alayhi salam that you might understand. And the verse continues, we relate to you, O Muhammad salam, the best of stories in that which we have revealed to you of this Quran. O Hayna, Wauhaya Root, Ilayka Hadha Al Quran. Think about that. See, the two ways in which Allah Azawajah speak, uh, speaks is mentioned here in the verses. Isn't that interesting? Although you were before uh, among uh, the unaware. Now, is there any verse here saying that Allah Azawajal sent down or inspired the Prophet Muhammad something other than the Quran? Think about that, brothers. Here's another verse. Again, Anzal Nahu, Nun Zai Lamrud, third person singular pronoun. We said it down. It's singular pronoun. The word Al Hayna, Wal Haya Root. Here's another verse, chapter 13, verse 37. And thus we have revealed it. It's singular pronoun as an Arabic legislation. Anzalnahu, singular pronoun. Hukman Arabiyan. The word hukman comes from the Arabic root ha kaf mim, which means to exercise authority, to command, to give judgment, to judge, or to be wise. Set it down, a judgment or a legislation in Arabic. Is this referring to anything other than the Quran, brothers? Think about it. It's referred to a singular pronoun. He said, it down, singular pronoun. <coughs> Chapter 16, verse 102. Say, the messenger is told to say to the people, Qul, the pure spirit, Ruhul Qudus, this is referring to Jibril alayhi salam, again, has brought it down, Nazzalahu, singular pronoun, from your Lord in truth to make firm those who believe and as a God, as a good tolerance to the Muslims. Nazzalahu, third person, masculine, singular pronoun. Look at that, brothers. Allah Azza is so precise with his choice of words. Let's continue, inshallah. Chapter 17, verse 39. I love this too. <clears throat> that is what your Lord has revealed or inspired to you of wisdom. Thalika mimma awha. The word awha comes from the root. Wauhaya ilayka to you. Rabbuka minal hikmati. Of, this is what we inspire to you of wisdom. Now, if you read the verses before this, about 10, 15 verses before this, there's, there's all these commands which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives. You know, he'll say things like, do not speak of that which you have the knowledge. Do not take the, uh, the soul of, of, of a person unjustly. Do not touch the wealth of the orphan, etc., etc. Then he says, that, that, thalika. Obviously, it's talking about the thing before this. Is what we inspire to you of wisdom. Is this referring to anything other than the Quran, brothers? Think about it. Chapter 17, verse 106. And it is a Quran which we have separated by intervals that you might recite it to the people over, over a prolonged period. And we have sent 
eat them. Wanazalahu, singular pronoun, said eat them progressively. Singular pronoun. We've said eat them. You see that, brothers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never talks about this, this jewel or this plural uh, uh, revelation. Chapter 18, verse 27. And recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book. What will recite? Ma uhiya, wauhaya, root, inspired. Ilayka min kitabi rabbika. Which book is this talking about? Recite what has been inspired to you from your Lord. Which book? Think about it, brothers. There is no change of his words. And never will you find in, an, in, uh, in other than him a refuge. What is this talking about? Other than, uh, apart from the Quran. <clears throat> Here's another verse. Chapter 25, verse 1. The, ver the chapter, uh, Surah Furqan, starts off with, Blessed is he who sent down the criteria, Nazzal al-Furqan. What's the Furqan here? Upon his server, that he may be to the world's a warner. What was this Furqan that was sent down upon Prophet Muhammad, It's obvious. Here's another verse, chapter 25, verse 32. And those who disbelieve say, why was the Quran not revealed? Nuzila sent down to him all at once. Thus it is, Kadalika, that we may strengthen your heart, Lino Vapita, thereby your heart, Bihi for Adaka. See? Bihi for Adaka. Bihi. Singular pronoun. Singular pronoun. We have spaced it distinctively. Singular pronoun. Again. Chapter 26, verse 192 to 194. And indeed, the Quran, wa innahu, is the revelation of the Lord of the worlds. Wa innahu. The trustworthy spirit has brought it down. Nazala, nun zaylam, bihi, singular pronoun. Arruhul amin. The, the trustworthy spirit has brought it, singular pronoun, down upon your heart, ala kalbika, that you may be of the warners. Look at our brothers. Singular pronoun. Wa innahu. See, wa innahu. The Quran is a revelation. Third person singular pronoun. Bihi. Third person singular pronoun. What more does Allah Azza have to say, brothers? Think about that. Here's another verse. Chapter 29, verse 45. Recite, O Muhammad, salam, what has been revealed or inspired to you of the book. Utulu ma uhiya wawhaya root. Ilayka min al-kitab. Which book? An established prayer. In their prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing. And the remembrance of Allah is greater. And Allah knows that which you do. Uh, knows that which you do. Recite what has been inspired. Uhiya. Wawhaya root. Of the book. Is this talking about anything other than the Quran, brothers? Here's another verse. Chapter 35, verse 31. And that which have, we have revealed to you, O Muhammad salam, of the book, the book, is the truth. Look at this. Awhayna, again, wawhaya root. Ilayka, to you, minal kitabi, of the book, huwal haq. The word huwa here is, in Arabic, masculine singular pronoun. It is the truth. See, singular pr pronoun, confirming what was before it. Indeed, Allah is of his servants. Well acquainted and singing. Singular pronoun. Chapter 39, verse 23. I love this. Allahu nazzala ahsan al hadith. The Quran itself is referred to as the best hadith. Many Muslims don't know this, subhanAllah. The Quran itself is referred to a hadith. Allah has sent down the best statement, the best hadith. Kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya. A book, Kitaban, Mudashabihan Mathania, which is oft repeated and uh, which resembles itself. The skins shiv off therefrom of those who fear their Lord, then their skins and their hearts relax to the remembrance of Allah. Look at this. Thalika Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. By which He guides. Look at this. Yehti, He guides. Bihi, singular pronoun. By it, the Ahsan al Hadith, He guides. Singular pronoun. What more does Allah Azawajal have to say, brothers? Isn't this clear what the Quran is saying? I'm going to put all these to the dot points later to, 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 uh, to recap what, what we just went through. 
chapter 42 verse 7 and thus we have revealed to you an Arabic Quran Quranan is this referring to anything other than the Quran that you may be warned the mother of the cities and those around that are warned the day of assembly about which there is no doubt a party will be in the paradise and a party in the blaze to you Quranan Arabian. Is this referring to hadiths and sunnah and all these other things? Think about it, brothers. Chapter 43, verse 43 to 44. Look at this. So adhere to that which is revealed or inspired to you. Indeed, you are on a straight path. And indeed, it is a remembrance for you and your people. Wa innahu, singular pronoun, la vikrun. Third person, masyan, singular pronoun. It is a reminder for you and your people. Singular pronoun. Whatever was inspired to Prophet Muhammad, is always described in singular. If there was a secondary wahi, how come Allah never speaks about it? Chapter 47, verse 2. And those who believe and do righteous deeds and believe in that which was sent down upon Muhammad, Nuzila, Nun Zaylam, sent down, ala Muhammadan, and it is the truth from their Lord. Wahuwa al Haqqu, Wahuwa is singular pronoun. Mir Rabbihim, it is the truth from their Lord. Whatever was sent down, ala Muhammad, anything was sent down to him. Is described in singular, masculine singular pronoun. Subhanallah. Look at all these verses I've quoted. Now, this is one of those heavily abused verses, mashallah. The, the Muslims, especially the traditional, they heavily abuse it. I'll, I'll try to get through this quickly. What they do is they quote this part here. Wama yantiho anil hawa. He does not speak of his own desire. So they claim that whatever Muhammad spoke was revelation. Well, if that's the case, then how do you explain other verses where Allah tells him off? For example, there's a verse which says, uh, Offer Allahu anka, may Allah forgive you, anka, you. Uh, lima afinta lahum, why did you give them permission? Allah tells him off there. Well, if everything he spoke was revelation, why would Allah tell him off? There's another verse in the Quran which says, uh, Ya ayyuhal nabi, lima, tuharrimu, lima tuharrimuna ma ahallallahu lak. O oh, oh Prophet, why do you make for yourself haram what well, Allah has made halal for you? So obviously he spoke some words, didn't he? He tried to make something haram for himself. And Allah tells him off. So obviously this verse, he does not speak of his own desire, has a context. Let's read this from the start. By the star when it descends, your companion Muhammad has not strayed, nor has he erred. Nor does he speak from his own inclination. It is, singular pronoun, it is not but a revelation revealed. In huwa, the word huwa is singular pronoun. Illa wahyun yuha. See, wahyun, wawha ya root. Yuha, wawha ya root. Taught to him by intense in, in, intense in strength. Allamahu shadidul quwa. Who's this talking about? Someone who's powerful, right? One of soundness. And he rose to his true form while he was at the higher part of the horizon. Then he approached and descended. And was at the uh, distance of two bow legs or nearer. And he revealed to his servant what he revealed. The heart did not lie about what he saw. So will you dispute with him about what he saw? And he certainly saw him in another descent. What's this talking about, brothers? This obviously is talking about Muhammad and his encounter with Jibreel. How Jibreel came down to him and he revealed the Quran to him. If from this angle, from this context, he does not speak of his own desire. What else is this talking about? Obviously, there's a context here, brothers. But they plucked these verses out of the Quran and say, Oh, so you said this is referring to something else. Look, let's continue reading. And he saw him as at another descent, at the low tree of the utmost boundary. Near it was a, was a garden of refuge, when that covered the low tree, that which covered it. The sight of the Prophet did not swerve, nor did he transgress. He certainly saw of the greatest sight of his Lord. Clearly, there's a context here, brothers. In Huwa, singular pronoun. Illa wahyun yuha. This is clearly talking about the Quran. It is the revelation. Singular pronoun, nothing but except the revelation by, by the Lord of the Worlds. So you are third person must have a singular pronoun. What more do I need to say? 
He's in a verse. Chapter 81, verse 19 to 21. Indeed, that indeed, the Quran is a word conveyed by a noble messenger. Innahu laqawlu, the speech, the word, Rasulin Kareem. Owner of power, the quwwatin, owner of power. Who's this talking about? And high rank of Allah, the Lord of the throne, in the Zil Arish al Makin. Obeyed there, muda'in, and trustworthy, thamma ameen. This is obviously talking about Jibril, isn't it? Alayhi salam. Owner of power, owner of power, the quwwatin. Indeed, innahu la qawlu rasulun kirim. This, it is, the speech of a noble messenger. Now here's another verse, chapter 69, verse 40 to 43. Says, it says exactly the same words in Arabic. Innahu la qawlu, the speech, the word, rasulun kirim. And it is not the word of a poet, little do you believe, nor the word of a soothsayer, little do you remember. It is a revelation from the Lord of the Wills. Innahu, innahu, third person similar pronoun. It is the Quran, the speech, qawl, qawlu, of a noble messenger. It refers to Jibril and it refers to Muhammad alayhi salam. Jibril brought the revelation down to, down to Muhammad and Muhammad alayhi salam conveyed it to us. Simple as that. Now, this is very interesting here. Now, I'll show you numerous verses in which Allah Azza spoke, yukallima, this verbal communication. Allah spoke verbally to Prophet Muhammad through Wahyan and he sent a messenger to him. And it was nothing but the Quran that was inspired and sent down to him. I've shown you numerous verses on this, how Allah refers to the revelation in singular pronoun. Is that not interesting? Now, here's a question though. This is very interesting. Did Allah or can Allah communicate to, with his servants through other means for example can he communicate with his servants non-verbally now the answer is obvious of course he can now here's some verses to prove this have a look at this verse chapter 8 verse 43 remember O muhammad salam, when allah showed them to you yuri kahumu showed them to you in your dream manamika in your dream as few and if he had showed them to you as many, you bullet would have lost courage and would have disputed in the matter of whether to fight or not. And this is in the context of war. But Allah saved you from that. Indeed, he is knowing of what is in the press. Now, this is in the context of war. Now, Allah Azzawajal is saying, he showed the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, he showed him a dream. He showed him a dream about some, about some, some event. But the question is, is this wahi though? Because in the, in the verse, it doesn't say anything about wahi, wahyan, nor does it say anything about sending down. It simply says, I showed you a dream. So Allah Azza also communicated with Muhammad Ali Salam by a dream. Isn't that interesting? Now look at this other verse here. Chapter 48, verse 27. Certainly has Allah showed to his messenger the vision. Look, ar-ru'ya, the vision. In truth, you will surely enter Al-Masjid Al-Haram if Allah wills in safety with your head shaved and your head shorun, not fearing anyone. He knew that which he did not know and has arranged before that a conquest at hand. Now, from these verses, we, we know straight off the bat, we could see here clearly that Allah Azawajal, not only did he speak to Muhammad, he also communicated with him non-verbally through dreams, manami, and visions, ar-ru'ya. Dreams and visions. Isn't that interesting? This answers so many questions when you think about it. You know, they say that they, they take some verses out of context and say, Oh, you see, Muhammad was, was informed about this, so this must have been another revelation. Well, couldn't Allah have informed the Prophet through dreams and visions? Because I've shown you numerous, numerous verses that the only, uh, the only uh, wahi that was uh, inspired the Prophet Muhammad was the Quran. And nothing but the Quran. And Allah always describes it in masculine singular, never dual, never pl plural. Think about that. Here's another verse for you. This is another verse that's abused by the Muslims. Chapter 66, verse 3. <clears throat> and remember when the Prophet confided to one of his wives a statement. Now here the word, the word is hadith. He told his wife a, a hadith in, in, in confided, in private. In private, right? And she went and informed another of it. And Allah showed it to him. Wa adharahu Allahu. Wa adharahu. Allah made it manifest. He made it known or he showed it to him. Right? 
He made known a part of it and ignored the part. Now let's pause it for a moment. If something other than the Quran was inspired to Prophet Muhammad, then what would, what would it say Allah made known a part of it and ignored the part? Is wahi, revelation from Allah, is that something worthy of being ignored? Think about that. How could this be referring to wahi? It simply says Allah made it known to him. Just like here, Allah showed him a dream and Allah showed him a vision. And here it says Allah made it known to him. But it says nothing here about wahi, nor does it say anything about sending down revelation. So Allah communicated with Muhammad through dreams and visions. Doesn't that make perfect sense? The verse continues says, and when he informed her about it, she said, who told you of this? He said, I was informed. No, it doesn't say I was told or was revealed to me. I was informed by the knowing that I wear. See, Allah Azza wa Jal, from the, from the text, there's a textual evidence. Here it is. He communicated non-verbally with Muhammad through dreams, manami, and visions, ar-ru'ya. Isn't that interesting? SubhanAllah. He made things known to him. He made, he made it manifest to him. But this is outside of revelation, right? Now, I'm going to recap the verses now, just to get us really thinking. Remember how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yukallimahullah, he spoke to Muhammad alayhi salam through wahyan, through wahyan, right? Now, let's recap. Chapter 42, verse 52. And thus we have revealed or inspired to you an inspiration of our command. Awhayna, say the same word, wawhaya, wawhaya, ilayka ruhan min amrina, an inspiration of our command. But remember when you keep reading it, it says, you, Muhammad, you didn't know what is the book, nor what is faith, but we have made it, singular pronoun, a light by which we guide. Remember? Next verse, chapter 6, verse 19. And thus, and this Quran was inspired or revealed to me, were all here, same root, wawhaya, ilayya hadha al-Quran. Is this referring to anything other than the Quran? Chapter 12, verse 3. We have revealed to you of this Quran, awhayna wawhaya root. Ilayka hadhan Qur'an. Chapter 17 verse 39. Thalika mimma awha wawha ya root. Ilayka rabbuka minal hikmati. Remember like the verses, if you read the verses just before this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you all these commands. Don't do this, do this, do this, don't do that, etc. Then it says that is what we inspire to you of, of, of wisdom. Is that referring to anything other than the Qur'an brothers? Here's another verse. Chapter 18, verse 27. And recite what law? Ma uhiya wawhaya root. Ilayka min kitabi rabbika. Of the book from your Lord. Which book is this talking about? It's obvious. Chapter 29, verse 42. Similar to the one before. Utlu, recite. Ma uhiya wawhaya root. Ilayka min al kitab. Of the book. Which book, brothers? Is there any reference here to something other than the Qur'an, you know, the hadith and the sunnah and something else? No, there isn't. Chapter 35, verse 31. Awhayna kitabi huwa al-haq. Huwa, singular pronoun. Singular pronoun. We have revealed or inspired to you of the book. It is the truth. Singular pronoun. Chapter 42, verse 7. And we have revealed or inspired to you an Arabic Qur'an. Awhayna ilayka Qur'an an Arabiyan. Where are those verses, brothers? Chapter 43, verse 43. So adhere to that which has been revealed or inspired to you. Uhiya wawhaya root ilayka. Indeed, you are on a straight path. And indeed, it is. Wa innahu, singular pronoun. What it is, la dhikrun. A reminder for you and your people. Singular pronoun. Chapter 53, verse 4. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It is singular pronoun. Are these verses talking about anything other than the Quran? Now, as a side note here, like this, um, I'll give some honorable mentions from the Quran. For, just from the top of my head. There's a verse in the Quran which Allah instructs the messenger to say, in, uh, sorry, it says, uh, in attabiyu illa ma yuha ilayya. I follow not. Illa except what is inspired to me. The same root. root. And this is repeated in two other verses, exactly the same in Arabic. In in attabiyu illa ma yuha ilayya. Another verse in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, commands the Prophet, the Messenger, to say, Qul innama attabiu ma yuha ilayya mir Rabbi. 
I only for innama, I only follow what is inspired Yuha, Wahya, Mir Rabbi from my Lord. Bro, there, there are numerous verses like this. But is there any textual evidence that some, something other than the Quran was Wahyan inspired to him? Can you find such a verse? I can't, brothers. Subhanallah. Remember the second form of speech and Allah Allah Azza wa Jalla spoke you Kalimahullah to Prophet Muhammad by sending a messenger, Yursil al Rasulun. Let's recap the verses, chapter 2, verse 23. And we have sent down upon our servant, Nazalna ala abdina upon our servant, Nun Zaylam root. Then produce if you're in doubt about what we sent down upon our servant, then produce a surah like the where like it. This surah in me myth here, well, if something other than uh, surahs was sent down to him, why would Allah say bring a surah like it? Think about that. Chapter 2, verse 97. Uh, it mentions Jibir. It is number Jibir who has brought down the Quran upon your heart. فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ نُنْ زَيْلَمْ رُوتْ نَزَّلْهُ Singular pronoun is brought it ala qalbika upon your heart. Singular pronoun. Chapter 2, verse 231. And we have revealed anzala نُنْ زَيْلَمْ رُوتْ to you of the book, Al Kitab, and wisdom, Wal Hikmah. Remember the verse straight after this? Ya idhukum bihi. He instructs bihi, singular pronoun. With it, he instructs you. Otherwise, Allah would have said bihima or bihimu, but it doesn't say bihi, singular pronoun. Chapter 4, verse 166. Allah, but Allah would bears witness to that which he has revealed. Anzala, nun zaylam, ilayka, to you, revealed, sent down to you. He has sent it down. And Zalahu with his knowledge, and so do the angels bear, bear, bear witness also. Allah and the angels bear witness to that which is revealed to you. He sent it down, singular pronoun, by his knowledge. See? Singular pronoun, prophets. Look at this. Here's another verse, chapter 12, verse 2. And we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran. And Zalahu, singular pronoun. Quranan Arabian. Look at this. Look at these verses. Chapter 13, verse 37. And we have revealed it as an Arabic legislation. Anzalnahu, singular pronoun. Hukman Arabian. A judgment in Arabic. Are those verses referring to anything other than the Quran, brothers? Chapter 16, verse 102. The pure spirit of Ruhul Qudus has brought it down. Nazalahu, singular pronoun, has brought it down. Chapter 25, verse 1. Blessed is he who sent down. The, the, the criteria, the Furqan, Nazzal al Furqan upon his servants, so he could be to the people of Warner. Is this Furqan referring to anything other than the Quran? Here's another verse, chapter 26, verse 193. The trustworthy spirit has brought it down. Nazzal, nun zaylam, root, bihi, singular pronoun, ar ruhul amin. The trusted spirit has brought it down upon your heart. Chapter 39, verse 23. Allah has sent down the best hadith, the best statement. Allahu nazzala nun zaylam root. Ahsan al hadith. Remember the verse continues? Kitab al mutashabihan mathaniya, a book which is consistent with itself and repeated. And towards the end of the verse it says, Thalika hudallah. That is the guidance of Allah. Yehdi bihi. By it, single pronoun. With it, he guides you. Single pronoun, brothers. Finally, chapter 42, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 47, verse 2. And those who believe in that, that which was sent down upon Muhammad, Nuzila, Nun Zaylam root, ala Muhammadan, and it is the truth from their Lord. Wahuwa al haqqu Wahuwa, singular pronoun, Haqqu, the truth, Mirrabihim, from their Lord. Look at all these verses, brothers. Is there any evidence whatsoever? That Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed something other than the Quran to Prophet Muhammad So that's the question here. Was there anything other than the Quran, other than the Quran, that was either inspired? Remember that word wahyun. Now you have uh, the, the different uh, derivatives of that word wahyun, wahyun, awhayna, awha, yuha, uhiya, fayuhiya, etc. Was there anything other than the Quran that was inspired to him, and or sent down? You know the, the, uh, the derivatives of that nun say lamb root? Nazzalna, nazzalahu, anzalnahu, nuzzila, unzila, etc. To, upon Prophet Muhammad a.s. Brothers, can you find anything other than the Quran that was either inspired, 
was sent down upon him, other than the Quran. But we know that Allah Azza also communicated non-verbally through dreams, manami, and visions, a ru'ya. Allah made no things to him outside of the Quran as well. But that doesn't mean it's revelation, brothers. What we as Muslims have to follow is the Quran, the revelation that came down to the Prophet Muhammad. Think about that, brothers. I wish you all, uh, I wish you guys all the best, and inshallah, I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum.